Hey YouTube, this will be my first official video, so bear with me. Here's the sawmill, designed and built myself. Do a quick walk around. Just filming this on an iPhone, so probably not the greatest. The saw head is a fairly unique design. I'm unsure if there's any benefit to doing it this way, but I just wanted to do something different. It's very rigid. Cuts nice and straight, very little vibration. To change a blade, you simply pull off these outside covers, one on each side. You can slide the blade right on. Belts down inside there, drives off this clutch. Goes around the tensioner here and around this drive wheel. This drive wheel is aligned with this adjustment here. Blade tension done off of this. You simply loosen the axle off and you can adjust forward or backwards. There's one on either side so you can align. tensioner there. Utilize the pilot bearing on the end here. A little extra stability of the shaft. Clutch is a little rattly. I think that's pretty normal for centrifugal clutches. Machined all the parts myself. I don't claim to be a professional machinist, but I get by. I know what I need to know. If I don't know it, I'll learn it. Oil filter down in there. Oil fill down there. And custom exhaust. Radiator sitting on rubber, rubber bushings on the bottom. Rubber mounted on the top. Helps with vibration. Here's the water tank. Uh, I believe it's actually a fuel tank for a grain auger. I just found it at the local hardware store. And there's my water valve there. It's actually a petcock valve off of a generator. This is a Honda motor. It's a GX360. Came out of the same generator. It was uh, the generator was dropped off of a pickup truck. It was basically a write-off. Ended up getting it all for free. Had very low hours. It's a two-cylinder overhead cam, belt-driven cam, 13 horsepower. Had to basically rewire the whole thing to make it all work in this application. Uh, managed to steal the oil light and temperature light and all the sensors. Everything seems to work. Has an electric fan. Fan's just on a switch here, so if it's getting hot, just flick the switch and so far so good. For my uh, sliders up and down here, on this back piece, I machine grooves in the, in the side so you can just slide it in or out. Adjust the, uh, the grip it has. Utilize some UHMW. I'm trying to get in there. There we go. Sliders. Helps lower the friction front and back. There's one down inside there too. Helps with vibration as well. Now I use the one inch ready rod, eight threads per inch. Then when you rig the cables this way, it cuts that in half, which gives me a quarter inch up or down per turn on the handle. Haven't had any issues with it creeping up or down. It's fairly tight. I was on a ball bearing there. 
All these uh, pulleys have bronze bushings. Runs on a ball bearing down in there. This particular pulley goes, travels up and down as well with the cable. Use the marine style gas tank. With a quick strap, just press the button, release the strap and you can and I can take the gas tank home with me when I go back to town and bring out fresh gas. Just adjust the uh, cable heights here. Get the saw nice and level. If the cable stretches, you can just adjust accordingly. These wheels I actually got off Amazon. They got greasable needle bearings in them. Seem to work good. Just inverted the square tubing to get my uh, get my V. It doesn't have any real guard on it. I don't really foresee the blade kind of flying out of there, but I haven't blown one up yet, so we'll see. Now this arm here just slides back or forth depending on what's in your log. The idea is just to keep this as close to the log as possible. Helps with it cutting straight. This current rail system is uh, it's adequate. I'm going to build a 2x4 rectangle steel frame underneath it at some point. Make it a little more rigid and that way you can skid it around and it'll be easier to level up. I can currently mill about a 17 foot long log. As you can see it's just sitting temporarily on, on some wood planks. Nothing special about that. For an upcoming deck project, I've got a whole bunch more of this I've already cut. We just stack it in that little tent to dry. It's cutting nice and straight, very little saw marks. I've actually cut a, about a 316 strip with it and cut straight the whole way, so I'm pretty impressed with that. Now, this log equipment we actually found. Half mile down the road in an old farmhouse. I'm told it's probably about 100 years old, so we figured we'd make use of that too. But there it is. I'll uh, do a time lapse next of the build. You can see basically everything. I'm not great at taking pictures when I'm building, I get a little carried away, but you'll get the idea. And then after the time lapse, I'll uh, have some video of it cutting wood.